you so much for staying tuned. Let's go, analyst. Join me to welcome Derek Ohuago. Derek, welcome to TMI. He was one time also councillor of uh, in what was again a local government. Yes. 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 A councillor, and of course, uh, one time an executive director, right to to the state, to the state government. government. Yeah. Profile of Derek extensive. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Obaraye and Co. Were you surprised at this particular moment of what happened in Koje? I, I, I should be surprised. We all should be surprised. Although we have experienced, we have witnessed several prison breaks in Nigeria over time, but none have occurred very close to the seat of power mm. in Abuja. I think this is the first time there is such occurrence in Abuja. Mm. You know, and in at the same day this you know incident occurred. The advanced team of uh, Mr. President was attacked, you know, it's in its own states. You know, so we should be surprised. These are new grounds that, you know, new territories that we are witnessing, we are exploring in the defective security architecture of our country. So I, I'm surprised that it has gotten this far, you know, that the, the, this ugly, insecurity minutes have taken a new dimension entirely. Uh, you, you, you will recall that such incidences happened in countries like Afghanistan mm. and uh, a few years later there was the, um, a forceful takeover of government by the Taliban. You know, so we, we, we this uh, country, as it is, we need to quickly put on our thinking cap with a view to ensuring that we restructure the, mil the, the security architecture of this nation. Some time ago, governors of Bonu and Benue were equally attacked by these terrorists. You will also recall that um, last, it was last month yeah. that military formation in Niger State was attacked and we lost several able bodied military personnel. Mm. A few months ago, the airports of Kaduna State, of Kaduna, was attacked by terrorists and the rail line was also attacked in the same states. Presently, the Abuja Kaduna Express Road is unmotorable, not because the state of the road is deplorable, but because of the security situation in that road. Terrorists are having a feed day in every part of the country. They, you know, um, uh, show themselves by way of kidnapping, raping, assassination, and what have you. The latest of the trend now is these terrorists go from church to church, killing people, kidnapping uh, Christian clerics, you know, and what have you. So I can say we are very close to having a failed state. Mm. And if nothing is done, like 911 to salvage the situation, I don't know what else you know, that, can, that would befall our enemy with right. the present situation of things in our nation. But now let's look a look, uh, let's take a look at the election. It's fast approaching 2023, less than a year, and we are having this situation. Some people are saying that it is not unrelated with the forthcoming election, that it has this connotation with the election. How true is that? What you say is not related to the forthcoming election. I cannot fully comprehend, you know, what that means. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that if it is not unrelated to this election, forthcoming 2023 election, if some people are trying to use it to, you know, weaken mm -hmm. the goodwill of a particular candidate or party in order for a particular candidate to gain cheap victory. Well, I think that is very petty and unfortunate. Hmm. Yes, you know, people could say that. 
Because in the year 2012, the, there was reports that members of Boko Haram chose Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari, to be their spokesman, their negotiator, you know, with the government. And people also said the Boko Haram situation. Maybe that is allegations and speculation. Of course, speculation, yes. of course. That this Boko Haram situation is not, you know, we cannot say it's not related with the government of the day giving it backing. Initially, you know, maybe be, be, before they became, took the aims of affair of the leadership of this country. State speculation. Of course. But at the end of the day, normally when you harm people, people without control, people with, with the uh, potential of anarchy, and you harm them in order to achieve a selfish goal, when that goal is achieved, you will not be able to cut them to size. Mm. They become a thorn in your flesh. They will demand much more than you know you are bargained for. And because they are already armed, you can no longer retrieve this arm from them. And they have tasted some dirty, ugly side of power, and they want to continually muscle their way towards achieving their goal. And as a result, their territory are you know they are expanding their territory. And you recall presently, as we speak, Boko Haram and Iswap are controlling some, still controlling some territories in the north, you know. And their agenda has become hegemonic and territorial in nature. Some of these territories that they are controlling now at the moment, they make people they pay taxes and royalties in order for them to do go about their normal daily activities. Without which, you know, there will be problem and bloodshed in that particular community that they are controlling. So these people are interested in taking over the realms of affairs of Nigeria. And uh, we have seen similar cases, in, like I said, in Afghanistan. We also have some similar cases in Syria. And what was the end result? If not for the intervention of uh, countries like Russia in the, and America in the situation that bedeviled Syria, today Syria would have been in the hands of ISIS. So Nigeria, I don't know what our leader, the kind of, the kind of um, complacency that the leadership of this country, you know, is, is meddling, that they, they are not meddling with such issues as we have with, uh, on ground with key globes. We as a nation, as a people, and the leadership of this country, we need to come together, like now one one, like before yesterday, to ensure, to ensure to that we declare a state of emergency in the situation, a security situation in the in the in this nation. No part of the country is free from this menace. Is it the southeast? You know what the story is there. Is it the southwest? You know what the situation is there. Is it the north? Is it the north central, or the north east, northwest, or north central? You know, even the south south that seem to be a little calm. You even know what the situation is there. This uh, 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 security situation. If we do not nip it at the board, we have like less than a few months to quickly do something about it and to be uh, uh, dispassionate in handling this situation. If we do not, if we do not urgently tackle the situation that we have on our hand now, it will spiral into what is unexpected. Remember, a country as safe as Japan, a country that records less than 10, uh, uh, not 10 percent, 10, 10, number 10, figure 10, deaths a year annually relating to uh, gunshots and gun-related violence. Just less than 10 people die of such situation in a year. Lost their country's prime minister. One of the best things that have happened to Japan. If such a, uh, uh, sorry, former prime minister. If such a good person, a good individual, could lose his life as a result of such dastardly act, what do you expect of a country like Nigeria? And these people, the politicians will soon be coming out now to campaign. Yeah, they've done almost nothing in relation to the security challenges and situation we have in our country. At the moment, none of, nobody is free anymore. If the uh, uh, president of the nation can be attacked, if governors of states can be attacked, if uh, uh, Christian clerics and peaceful Christian worshippers can be attacked, even the same Muslims, you know, are not free. 
because they also attack Muslims. You know, if every part of the country has so much security challenge and government is doing less to nothing to salvage the situation, well, only God will we pray to help us. All right, let me take seed relations to 2023 election. We have uh, these uh, top Boko Haram members that have escaped from prison. Well, uh, uh, people are like saying that it may lead to a disruption of the election in some states if it's not well handled. How do you think the security architecture, even the federal government, should go about this to also have a peaceful election, knowing fully whether these people, they are out there? Well, to achieve peaceful election, first of all, even the Satis, the, uh, what's their name? Is the uh, ESN. Uh, yeah. I've already said in some part of the Enugu and other states that there should be no election. You know? And some of these uh, Boko Haram and uh, terrorist individuals in the north have already uh, declared that they do not want election in some parts of the north. Now, if uh, our politicians want to they should be looking beyond you know, conducting peaceful elections. Immediately, there should be an act of par parliament empowering the restructuring of our security architecture in, the, in, in, in Nigeria. The state government should be given, do I say preference, do I say leverage, do I say opportunity? Or the, do I say power to control the security architecture of his states? There should be acts of parliament permitting the creation of state and local policing immediately, like now one one, and devolution of power to the extent that it's only when the federal government is invited, federal uh, security architecture is invited to a security situation in any state. It's when they should come. The state government, the state security architecture should be given the power to be the sole, you know, administrator of the security situation in the states. You know, and having said that, the people of a locality should also be given leverage so that they will have a say in what goes on in their locality. We need to remove sentiments from every process that affects our progress. If as long as we, are, we continue to involve sentimental attachments to issues that borders on nation building and national security, then we will continue to have this challenge. And the federal government should also be less selfish at this point about holding on to power. They want to hold on to all, every part of anything that concerns power in this nation. They should immediately remove their hand. Other parts of the world, is it Europe, is it America, is it even in, in the Asia? The, there is a federal police. There is a state police. In America, they have the FBI, who is mostly the federal police. But they have you know, state police. They have in New York City, Los Angeles police, and so on and so forth. Those are the people who are first responders in the, any crime scene. And once they see that this crime is federal in nature, then they will reach out to the FBI, uh, you know, FBI to look into the issue and further you know, their investigation, mostly when the security situation is more than the scope of the state. Maybe involve cartel over one state, more than one state, and so on and so forth. So the federal government, they know that they cannot be everywhere at the same time. No matter how sharp the threat of the ego is, it must focus it in only one direction. You know, you want to be everywhere. You go, you are not omniscient. So you need to urgently look into this situation and divorce power like 911. Now, is, is there hope of recapturing all these members that have escaped from Koje prison, these top Boko Haram members? Do you see us recapturing them, bringing them back again to prison to serve their term? I wanted to avoid this particular question. You recall many years ago, uh, late uh, General Bashar stated that if any security situation 
uh, it lasts more than 24 hours that the people in government are responsible. You know, the, you can imagine people coming from wherever, you know, they came from and went into Abuja without intelligent reports stating the, 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 the situation. They got into Abuja, they planned prison break with explosive. They, you know, conquered and captured the prison for, and they operated for over an hour and they succeeded. You know, that will already tell you what we have on ground. But if the government now want to now, you know, be true to itself, then they can recede on their present stance and say, okay, let's go after these people. If you want to, you know, capture these people, it's as easy as, as you know, uh, killing a mosquito or a fly. But you know, what? happen to recapture them. It, it might not happen. It might never happen because there's no political way to the, you know, to the, to the affirmation. Why would you say it might not happen? I mean, these are dreaded Hello, check, check, check this out. It is in this same country that we witnessed two former governors who were sentenced to j for stealing the common patrimony of the people of their states. They were granted amnesty. Abi, it is in this same country that we witnessed Boko Haram terrorists who have already been in the custody of government that were given amnesty. It, true or false? Okay, was I already telling you the nature of government that we have? A Boko Haram terrorist giving amnesty, and when it, might, it was no longer feasible for them to grant more amnesty, what was ne not the next thing that we witnessed? Prison break, and Boko Haram members were forcefully freed. So I don't see it happening. I don't see the government you know, effectively going, let me not say going after them, effectively going after, you know, these people. It's just lip service, lip service. The Ghana soldiers and security personnel will still work their way to, you know, maybe capturing fresh or more um, 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 Boko Haram members that might have been uh, uh, careless with their illegal oppression. And when you capture them, one way or another, they will find their way back into the, you know, the society or into their uh, evil uh, oppression. So <laughs> I don't see it happening. I don't see the government of the day having the political will to go after these people. All right, now to call it a wrap on this discussion, as a politician, still on 23 election, what do you think we should do, knowing for that this will happen? What should we do? What should Mr. President do? What should aspirants or candidates of political party do? What should we as uh, a singular citizens in this very public of Nigeria do to really, really safeguard ourselves and to make sure that our territorial integrity is not being disrupted or threatened by these cases and prison break, kidnapping, killings, you just know it. Well, all over the world, we have seen how citizens have taken their destinies into their hands where there have been failure on the part of government and leadership of a country, over time, the people of that society came together and decided to not be sheep being led to the slaughter anymore. They were able to come together and decide what the future of that country would be. We have several histories in Europe, in Asia, and what have you. So I will advise my people, the Nigerian people, the citizens of this country, to come together. We now have instruments of social media, wherein we can gather a million people, 20 million people within one hour. People who have fought for freedom in the past, they have this kind of opportunity. But we have this kind of opportunity. We should leverage on what we have and come together, mobilize ourselves, and decide the future that we desire for this country. Every citizen of this nation should start looking beyond his political you know, party. 
we should start looking towards being ambassador towards building Nigeria to a state of Eldorado, to a state of utopia that we all crave for. We should look at the different promises, fake promises that have been made by politicians. Whoa. A polyvar senator working in Lagos. The challenge we face is mainly misunderstanding. Some say because the children receive routine immunization at health center, they don't need the one we give at all. Some won't go to the health center to receive routine immunization because they receive the polio vaccine at all. But both are important. Look at the dirty environment, bad sewage disposal, people defecating openly, contaminated water. Everything needed to spread polio is all around all of us. Polio can lead to paralysis and even death. You can't even say prevention is better than cure. Because for polio, there is no cure, only prevention. I'm here to tell you that polio is like the rain that doesn't befriend anybody. The only cover against polio is for every child under the age of five to receive the polio vaccine. Your child is at risk because polio you know they look face. Polio doesn't discriminate. Protect your child. Thank you so much for uh, staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is TMI. And of course, I have a Derek Ohumago who are about to commence a decent on uh, this particular uh, discussion since that is for that breaking transition by uh, a power court. It's all about the Nigeria security situation. Uh, J prison break. That is what we're really, really talking about. So the rise of points in one minute. You've spoken at length, talking about court across the political line. Do the right thing at the right time. Please, one minute. Citizens should come together and decide the future that they want to fight. They should, like I said, they should be beyond political inclinage. They should look at the antecedents of the various politicians that aspire to lead us from 2023. Right. There are some who have done well in the past. There are some who have done badly in the past. There are some who have failed in their promises to their people in the past. So everybody has history. They should look at the history of these various individuals before they decide on what to vote for. And we all should, as a matter of fact, look beyond selling our votes. Right. We should avoid that temptation to sell our vote, no matter the amount that is given. Okay. Well, you 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 burn them. Well, no matter the amount that is given. What if that you have given fifty thousand or hundred thousand? What do you want me to do about that? I'm talking about the money here right now. That is the point I'm trying to make. When 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 people of a society decide to take their destiny into their hands then by all means, they should avoid any form of temptation that we set that society back years and decades of progress being eroded. Like in the case of France, people like uh, the current president of uh, prime minister, or is he president of prime minister of France? Yeah, president of France. Yeah. Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron. If they saw him as a joker, you know, when he came on board. And they almost he won, but they almost lost the house again. Anyway, thank you. You know, thank we you. also have a similar situation in Ukraine. Yes, thank you. you. Know? Thank but you. at the end thank of the you. day, at we the end of the day. We can go on, you know? on and on and on. You make your project. You have a twinkle waiting for us there. Well, you probably have to do the right thing at the right time. You said he was surprised that the game was already and not back from what even from Joe talked about. He said it's quite shocking, but here we are. You know who to vote for, you know the party to vote for, you know the kind of vote for. Please don't sell your PBC because your vote is your power. Oliver Derek, thank you so, so much. Thank we're you for having me. We're talking about it for almost 30 minutes because I was a little time conscious. So just pick up on and invite you next time. You're glad. <laughs> okay, let's now uh, uh, join Praiser. You know, talk so much. I want to fix 
politics, politics, hearts, red in politics, let's see what the fuck in the Praise will come up next with a special guest. Don't go away.